also the language behaviorism has a big trouble with explaining how language is possible, how language uh, works. Noam Chomsky had a very uh, extensive behavior uh, against behaviorism. And also, there are some philosophical questions. Yes? This might be like a counteractive question, but. Go ahead. Um, pain, Any kind of question, please. Pain is, is that. It, would you define pain as something only that you feel? Because, like, let's say someone was in a car accident and then they're in a coma. Like, their body's feeling pain. They may not feel the pain, but their body's, like, right. suffering pain. Yes. So, if, if, if pain is felt even by someone in a coma, then pain is an entity on its own. And it's not something that is subjective. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not, like, relative to each person because it is what it is, what it is, what it is. Kind That's of a very good point. Uh, you know, I just like echo brought out earlier, the subjective side of pain is so prominent, so important for a person, we, can, we cannot neglect it. But on the other hand, you would say, you know, what does pain do? Right? Why would we suffer pain? It has a purpose, it has a function. It should allow our body, uh, allow our mind to notice the danger and get away from the danger. Um, there is actually the book. Uh, the title is The Unwanted uh, Talent. They're talking about some you know, person, some people who couldn't feel pain at all. And they can do a lot of wonder. They can put their arm upon the fire and see it getting blackened and burned. Everybody was horrified and they didn't feel a sin. And they even laughed because they saw everybody got horrified. Because they didn't have the ability to feel pain anymore. And so their body often got you know, damaged and harmed. They, it's a miracle for them to live beyond teens. So that we do have a purpose, we have a function. The pain has a function. And if you think of, you know, in the high school biology class, if you dissect a frog, right, and then you touch some part of the frog leg, you put a knife on the head, the, the, the leg will, you know, withdraw you know, from the knife. I don't know whether the frog is conscious or not, is feeling the pain or not. Most of the time, it doesn't. But still, it you know, has the action and response to the damage to the body part, tissues. So people say, oh, that indicates that's a pain, right? He's not suffering the pain, and he tried to do something about it. So that's a functional definition of pain. And the question here is that whether these two approaches to pain can match. And whether uh, you have a different functional approach to the subjective, subjective side of the pain. And that's a very big question. And a lot of people argue against it. But really, the functionalism is not adequate to fully understand the subjective side of the pain or the mental phenomenon in general. So that's a really good question. But you can also appreciate what, what functionalists functional have to do. It's also very important. I was going to say, along the lines of that, and now you'll see where I download all my news, um, CNN actually had a story, I think, today on empathy involved with the pain and racial correlations. They're saying that doctors of you know, the same races are reporting more empathy towards patients that are of the same race. So that just kind of ties into the whole discussion of pain, how it's related to it's certainly related to the belief, too, right? You can right. certainly say with beliefs and desires. It's not a single element. So again, that would point out that behavior now is certainly very limited. But even functionalism, you know, which is a better version, you know, here is really a functional approach. And you understand during the term, uh, it puts the, <coughs> puts the pen together with other mental terms together in a framework, in a theory, let's say. You have many, many other terms. It really is a functional approach. You, you could observe it directly, but it doesn't imply it doesn't exist. Similarly, because we, we have postulated a lot of other theoretical terms like atoms, black holes. Nobody can ever observe the black hole. You can only observe something else which are influenced by the black hole. But similarly, you cannot observe the other person's pain, but that doesn't imply that a person doesn't suffer pain. It's just 
you know, it's a theoretic term. It's like other terms. It's really a functional concept. Really, here, it's, um, we didn't um, have time to go into the details to talk about functionalism. It's really a lot of theoretical subtlety there. But the, the idea, this idea is also a functional idea. It really, it's just, uh, you don't have to observe it. In order for postulate, or uh, suppose that thing exists. where there's a whole aspect to pain and seeking pain, overcoming pain, that is expressed so differently in so many cultures, so whether it's the sun dance in native cultures or in a lot of African cultures, you know, people do that, it's where they cut faces or, you know, we can all think of hundreds of examples. But one thing that everyone, this is I guess a hard thing I find, everyone understands that this is really, that this isn't pleasant ordinarily, that there is, if we ascribe meaning culturally, or someone goes through this ordeal, and it turns out that they're a married man, or they're stronger, or they're, they've seen God or God acted down into a different space, so there's a whole complex. Of it's really difficult. Um, my, one of my colleagues actually studied the pain. <laughs> um, it's a very complex phenomenon. Some people got a lot of pleasure out of pain. <laughs> yeah, you know, really? Like teenager, teenage girls who cut thing about cutting is yeah. it's a kind of um, you know an anxiety um, disorder and depression and they will report that they feel alive because they feel pain they feel nothing else they don't care about anything they don't care that they're suddenly getting up and that their mothers are mad at them or they don't care and the one thing that makes them realize they're still alive is they don't feel pain on themselves so exactly there's, there's a lot of psychological yeah so even you may you can you know understand the pain and it's really important to say understand the relation between the pain and other things. So the crucial idea is that pain is not always evil, <laughs> not always bad. But isn't that a reaction to pain? I mean, pain is it is. is ultimately a biological function, so not necessarily a mental state. It's the reaction to that pain right. which is its own mental state. So pain isn't really something that you can equate with like a belief as a mental state. It's a different sort of it's not a belief, right? It's a feeling, right? It's a right. So I'm saying, so I'm saying, it's a, it's a physical. What do you mean by physical? It's, it's, sort a, of it's, a, bi it's a biological function, but then it prompts a mental reaction. But the pain itself is not. But you can also mentally something theoretical. Right, create that's a different pain, kind like of pain, pain, right? Yeah, or you know, if you are so upset about something that your yeah, stomach but, gets upset. Right, right. So that's a different sort of pain, but that's prompted by. By some it's a sensation not some, not some versus a cognition of it. Yeah. Because she's, I think she's pinpointing the, 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 the actual sensation. Yeah. Like the sensation quality versus the mental state. The, state. the cognition of it. They're both mental states. It's just, you know, one is but the pain a thought from, about the pen, you know, a thing about the pen. One is a sensation of the pen. These are pretty different. <laughs> you can think of the pen without really suffering or in pain, being in pain. Or it can be in pain without thinking about the pain. <laughs> so. And in the back of the central nervous system, um, you can't have the sensation of the pain. So, I mean, that's what analgesics are, right? They block, you have a stimuli, you cut your leg or something. And the nerve is stimulated and it travels up and it goes up through the spinal cord and it zings and then there's the response. Um, an analgesic, you know, you take your aspirin or your Vicodin or whatever, it blocks or dulls. That sensation. But it doesn't so, spike it and the pain is still there, you just care about it less. Right? Well, sometimes. It could. Well, no, but that's, that's ultimately the goal. That's how right, it affects the brain. Right. So, so the pain itself is a, it's a brain well, state, not really the, a mental state. The stimulus. Hey, hey, be careful here. Unless, unless if, if you are, if you are a materialist, uh, um, assume, that, assume most people are here, right? <laughs> so, but if you're not, <laughs> they're different. You see, every mental state is also a brain state. Well, according to the material, yeah, identity fun, materialists. Yeah, yeah. Not, not necessarily identity theorist, but you know, almost every materialist would say, right? You know, it's the only one substance, and the thing which is responsible for all the mental phenomena is the brain. So every thing, you know, you think about uh, every mental state you have must be based upon some mental states, right? So in that sense, every brain, every mental.